All right, y'all. So this is section 5.1. And 5.1, y'all, talks about systems of equations. And so what we're going to be doing here is we're going to talk about what a system of equation is and how do we solve it. So in essence, y'all, what we have are two linear equations. And what we're looking for is we're looking for the point where those two lines intersect. Let me get rid of that. So y'all, we've talked about this y equals mx plus b pretty frequently in our class. Okay. So y'all, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to look at my first equation, y equals a negative 3x. And if I do a little stare and compare, my m, the number in front of the x, is a negative 3 over 1. And my y-intercept is always a point 0 and b. And because I don't have a b here, that's going to be 0 and 0. Okay, so y'all, if I'm going to graph this line right here, okay, I'm going to start right here at 0, 0. Since my slope is a negative 3 over 1, I can go down 3 into the right one, or I can go up 3 into the left one. And let me see if I can draw this as smoothly as I can. But there's my line. A little crooked. I apologize. All right, y'all, I'm going to do the same thing for the next one. 2x minus y equals negative 5. I want to put it in the form y equals mx plus b. So I'm going to move the y that way. And I'm going to move my 5 this way. So I'm going to get a 2x plus 5 equals y. Again, y'all, if I do a little stare and compare here, my m for this problem is 2 over 1, and my y-intercept is 0 and 5. Okay, so right here, y'all, here's my 0 and 5. Since my slope is a positive 2 over 1, I would go up 1, 2, and over 1, or we can go down 2 and to the left 1. And what we are trying to find, my friends are what are the coordinates of that point what is the point where the two lines meet and y'all if i look closely here these two points or these two lines i'm sorry meet at the point negative one three and this is what we call the solution to our system so y'all a couple of things what i like about the graphing method is it is visual i can exactly see what it is i'm trying to do looking for the point where the two lines meet uh, sometimes, y'all, it just gets a little tedious having to draw a bunch of lines every time. So what we have, y'all, is we have other methods on how we can do this. So another method we can do, y'all, is the method of substitution. So I'm going to walk you through the process here. In substitution, y'all, what we want to do oops, is we want to take one of the equations... And we want to see if we can solve one of those equations. It doesn't matter which one, either for x or for y. Okay. So, y'all, if I look at the two equations that I have here, the second equation right here, y'all, it seems like it would be really easy for me to solve this for y because we could take that x and move it over. It's a negative x. So when we move it over, it becomes a positive x. So now I have y equals x plus 11. The reason I wanted to do that is now, my friends, I'm going to come back to my first equation, 3x plus 5. If you notice here, it says 5y. But we found that y from the first equation is x plus 11. That's equal to a negative 17. And now all I have to do, y'all, is solve for x. So look, 3x plus, that is 5x plus 55 equals a negative 17. That's going to be 8x plus 55 equals a minus 17. Okay. So y'all, I'm going to go ahead and subtract 55 on both sides. Okay. And we get 8x equals, let me grab my calculator. Let me clear this out. What's a negative 17 minus 55? Negative 72. So when I divide both sides by 8, y'all, I'm coming up with x equals a minus 9. Now, remember, y'all, we're looking for the point where these two lines meet. Every point, my friends, has two coordinates. It has an x and a y coordinate. We just found the x value. We can now find the y value, y'all, by taking this number and plugging it in here. Negative 9 plus 11 is a positive 2. So y equals 2. And so now, y'all... The coordinates of our point where those two lines meet is negative 9 and positive 2. And so we can do this again, y'all, algebraically, where we do not have to draw any of the lines, okay? Y'all, I'm going to scroll down one more time. 
and I'm going to look at this next problem. And again, I'm going to use the method of substitution. So y'all remember in the method of substitution, I want to solve one of those equations, either for X or for Y. And I notice this equation is already solved for Y. So y'all, I'm going to plug this into the top equation. So 2X plus Y, which is now 3X is equal to 20. That's going to give me 5X equals 20. So when we divide both sides by 5, y'all, I'm coming up with X equals 4. Now, remember what we said. Every point, my friends, has two coordinates, X and Y. We know the X coordinate. Let's see if we can find the Y coordinate. So y'all, right here, I'm just going to write Y equals 3 times X. But we found X to be 4. And so 3 times 4, y'all, is going to give me 12. So the solution here, again, in the form X and Y, when X is 4, y'all, Y is just going to be equal to 12. Okay. So again, the these are the methods, y'all. The reason why I think they work so well is because they're easier to do without having to draw the lines. But again, what are we really looking, looking for? We're looking for the point where the two lines meet, right? That's all it is. Okay. Y'all, there is a second method, or a third method, I guess, we could use. It's called the method of elimination. In the method of elimination, y'all, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get the same number in front of the X, or we're trying to get the same number in front of the Y, but we want them to have opposite signs. So if one of the numbers is a 3, I'd like the other one to be a negative 3. If one of the numbers is a negative 2, I'd want the other one to be a positive 2. Okay, so y'all, the way I can do this here, let me just write down my problem again. 5x minus y equals 14, and x plus 8y equals 11. Okay, sorry about that, y'all. So what I'm trying to do here, y'all, is suppose I want to cancel out, say, my x's. If this number is a 5, y'all, I really want this one to be a negative 5. The way I can do that, my friends, is by multiplying everything here by negative 5. I'm going to rewrite my top problem again. But now, when we multiply here by minus 5, that becomes a minus 5x, a minus 40 with a y, and a minus 55. So that now, when we add straight down, y'all, would you notice what's going to happen? If we go straight down, those x's are going to cancel out. If it helps, think about that number as a negative 1. Minus 1 minus 40 minus 41 y. Uh, 14 minus 55 should be a minus 41. So when we divide everything by a negative 41, y'all, we're just coming up with y equals 1. Okay. Now that we know that y equals 1, again, we still need to find our x value, right? So remember, y'all, every point is always written in the form x and y. So I'm going to take this value of y, y'all, and I can plug it in to either one of those two equations. It doesn't really matter which one we do. Suppose I use the bottom one. I'm going to say x plus 8 times 1 is equal to 11. Well, 8 times 1 is just 8. If I minus 8 on both sides, y'all, coming up with x equals 3. So my point, again, in the form x and y, when x is 3, y is equal to 1. Okay. Let's scroll down a little bit further, y'all. Again, we're going to solve by elimination. So y'all remember, we're trying to get rid of either the numbers in front of the x's or the numbers in front of the y's. It's up to us. So y'all, I see that this is a 12. I'd really love for this guy to be a negative 12. And the way we can make that happen is by multiplying that top equation by a negative 3. So if I multiply, I'm sorry, if I multiply by a negative 3, y'all, that becomes a minus 12x. That becomes a minus 21y. That becomes a minus 15. And here I have 12x minus 5y equals 41. So when we add straight down, look, y'all, those 12x's cancel. This becomes a minus 26 for the y. Uh, 41 minus 15, that's a positive 26. So again, y'all, when I divide by negative 26, my y value here, y'all, ends up being the number negative 1. Okay. So now that I know that my y number is a negative 1, y'all, I still need to find my x number, right? 
because every point is always in the form x and y. So y'all, it doesn't really matter which one of those equations I use. I'm going to use this one right here. So look, I'm going to write 4x plus 7 times negative 1 equals 5. 4x minus 7 equals 5. So when I add 7 to both sides, y'all, that's going to give me 4x equals 12. So if we divide both sides by 4, my friends, I'm coming up with x equals 3. And so again, y'all, my point written in the form x and y is 3 and negative 1. Okay. So y'all, I believe I have one last question for us to do here. And this idea, y'all, it, it, we're doing the same thing, except now, y'all, remember when we had our two lines and we had two, two equations like x and y's? We wrote our points like this, y'all, x and y. Now, if you notice, we got three equations. Y'all, my point is going to be written like this now, x, y, and z. And so we're applying the same principle here. So look, y'all, if I'm looking at this problem here, and I'm trying to figure out is, hey, is there anything here I can do? Sorry, y'all, let me get rid of that. If I were to take, say, these two equations right here, y'all, if I were to add those two equations together, that would give me a 3x. Those y's would cancel. Those z's would cancel. 5 minus 2, y'all, that would give me a 3. So if we divided everything by 3, y'all, look what we got. We got x equals 1. Okay. Now let's see if there's anything else we can do. I'm going to come back over here one more time, y'all. And I want to know, let's see. Oh, wow. If x is equal to 1, y'all, how about if we do this? Let's come back over here, my friends, and let's plug in x equals 1. So I have 1 plus y plus z equals 2. And 2 times 1 plus y minus z equals 5. And let's see. If I move this 1 over, that's telling me that y plus z equals 1. Uh, that's at 2 plus y minus z equals 5. If I minus 2 on both sides, y'all, I'm coming up with y minus z equals 3. I'm going to write that right here. Y'all, if you notice again, if I add straight down, y and y is going to give me a 2y. Those z's are going to cancel out, and that's going to give me a 4. So y'all, if I divide both sides by 2, I'm coming up with y equals 4. Okay, so I'm going to write that down right here. Y equals 4. Y'all, I only have one more letter I need to find. We need to figure out what is our Z. I'll tell you what, y'all. Let's take this equation right here. Where the X was, let's put a 1. Where the Y was, let's put a 4. Plus Z equals 2. So 1 plus 4 is 5. Plus Z equals 2. Y'all, we minus 5 on both sides. Y'all, I'm getting z equals negative 3. Okay. And just like I told you guys before, we are going to write our point, y'all, just like this. X, Y, and Z. So we're going to go X, which is 1, Y, which is 4, and Z, which is a negative 3. And that's 5.1.